So the Middle East is a big area for us at the moment and we're really trying to push into um, the cellular backhaul arena. That's an area that we've been putting a lot of focus in throughout 2016 and we started to build up a very good pipeline. And then we're at this point where we can really showcase the sort of services that we're offering to people uh, from a cellular backhaul perspective. So offering additional reach into regions, but also the fact that through some of the acquisitions we've done, we now have a, um, a, a systems integration capability that we didn't have before, um, primarily through the acquisition of Caprock. And so from that perspective, we now have additional value that we can add into that whole process with cellular backhaul, including building out of towers and ancillary uh, hardware components around just the satellite backhaul uh, itself. So it's an area that we're really sort of pushing and trying to establish the fact that we're really a one-stop shop in that arena. Some of the challenges are generally uh, political risk. I think you've got so many different uh, territories and so many different countries in the region that are at different um, stages of their development that it's difficult to sort of generalize and have one business approach to the whole uh, market. With those political risks come some security risk guarantees as far as you know, financial risks or being able to actually um, do the, uh, complete the work of the project and then extract uh, the remuneration from the project correctly. So usually risk is one of the, the key components. Understanding some of the cultural elements as well, each country being quite different, even in the Arabic speaking nations, there's often very different ways that business is done and very different things that the customer wants to see from you before they'll engage with you. So I think that variety is really quite a, a challenge at times, um, but is also what makes the, uh, the, the region so rich and interesting as well. We feel again with the cellular backhaul side of things that there's a number of countries that are looking to take their 2G networks in the cell phone environment and spread them to three or, or even jump straight to 4G networks and the, and the rollouts that are required there. When they're trying to extend into smaller sort of regions as well, smaller villages or, or towns, it's very difficult sometimes to get either a microwave or a, a, a fiber sort of backhaul from those sites to be able to deliver a, a 3G or 4G service. So we see great latent opportunity as the, the telco start to spread out to the rural markets to assist them with their, their backhaul requirements and also to assist them on the, the systems integration side of things. I think that's a, a big opportunity. But still, it's a very big region as well for us from an energy perspective. So our energy division is very focused on m much of this region as a, as a potential for growth. Um, and I think with high throughput satellites coming on board and obviously the, the evolution, continued evolution of uh, systems like O3B, there is this interest now within the region, particularly in the energy sector, on looking at how we can deliver low latency um, solutions to, the, to that market. And that's an area that we're really focused on. Yeah, so I think from, from our perspective, because we've now grown uh, to such a large uh, sort of size, we're publicly listed in Australia, we're now looking at a revenue profile of, a, of over 500 million for 2017 after the acquisition of Caprock. That gives us a certain financial capability that maybe we didn't have when we were a smaller company several years ago doing $30 million of turnover. So we've got the capability to cash flow to actually invest in the region, invest in some of the capex, and take away some of the, the problems that the customers have on getting projects up because of the lack of ability to deliver the cash up front. So we can kind of come in and finance a number of deals, which helps local partners of ours to be able to um, actually bid on and win contracts that otherwise would be outside of their financial scope. So that's an area that we're sort of addressing those uh, challenges and opportunities. And I think from that perspective, we can, we can have a very good year or two ahead of us in this region, really pushing out into that cellular space and, and, and going beyond that, looking at what other opportunities there are out there. I think also, because of our size and our scale, we're trying to really develop the NGO market a little bit. And I know there's quite a bit of activity around the Middle East and into parts of Africa that are often accessed from here in Dubai that we are really going to spend a lot of time focusing on. So the humanitarian effort, the fact that we've got such flexibility with our bandwidth capabilities now that we can really de develop um, solutions for people who need bandwidth on demand or need to move capacity from one place to another because of a disaster or to expand an operation of relief that's going on. So NGOs is another area that we're really focusing on in this region.
I think this show so far, I mean, we've only been here a few hours, but the show so far is following a similar trend to a few others, which is um, I see three sort of hot topics that people are talking about. People are still talking about high throughput satellites and what that's going to do for the price of capacity, uh, whether that's from within the industry and concerns about revenue retention or whether it's from the, the end users themselves seeing if they can get cheaper unit prices. Um, that's an area that's still on the agenda. I mean, for service providers such as us, that's a challenge, but it's a challenge that I think we can um, sort of overcome by driving demand for bandwidth, which will sort of flatten out the, the unit cost issue. Um, I think the other uh, area that people are talking about still is Internet of Things, M2M. There's still a lot of talk about how is that going to impact our industry moving forward. How do we sort of, and how do we as a speedcast leverage that latent capability? And that's a very different type of uh, business model to ones we've seen previously. So I think a lot of people are still working out you know, how big is that opportunity and should we get into it? So there's a lot of chatter about that still keep sort of kicking around, uh, which is interesting. And also the, the LEO satellite revolution. The fact that there's these numerous players who are saying they're going to come into the market with a new LEO satellite constellation capable of delivering high throughput, low latency, etc. And I think a lot of people are still talking about that. How is that going to affect our industry? Who's actually going to succeed in that process? Because a lot of conjecture about the fact that is there space for all of them? Um, you know, so if we're going to pick a winner, who's going to win? And I think there's still quite a bit of uh, conversation about that.